Hi, it's Dave from Drive Adventure and welcome back to the channel. And I thought I'd do a piece today about why I think the Porsche GT3 PDK is the best gearbox in the world. I've driven the car now for 3,776 miles of pure pleasure. I thought it'd be good just to cover off the points about the PDK, why I chose the PDK. Because in some of the videos I've done recently, I've had people commenting on the YouTube comments about, oh, you should have gone manual, oh, that's a great spec, but I would have taken the manual. I think the reason I didn't take the manual option was because if I could have absolutely guaranteed I would have got a GT3 RS, then I would have gone for a GT3 RS, obviously a PDK only, and I would have taken a GT3 Touring with the manual gearbox. But as a one and only sort of out and out race car for the road, I thought it'd be best to go for the PDK because it was a better all round package when it comes to driving your GT3 in all scenarios. Now as you know I've taken this car on track at Anglesey and that's really when the PDK really comes into its own as you can downshift so fast and get ready for those corners and then when you're pushing on and zooming up the straights it goes through the gears so so fast and it's just a change, an audible change. It, I don't know how fast it is but it's like light speed really. It, So, so good. The manual on the other hand I think is more of a perhaps a romantic idea. It's if you just want to get out and explore the car and be more involved in the experience and connecting you to the car and what it's doing and to be a little bit more in control then I think the manual option, the GT6 manual option was the one to go for. Now I've been in a few uh, 911s in, in, you know, over the years and um, Having been in a Carrera T on track at Anglesey, I was really, really impressed with that gearbox. Now, I've not been in a GT3 with a manual gearbox yet, but we have got some exciting things planned later in June where we'll be taking a GT3 touring at my car on some rather picturesque roads, but we'll come back to that a bit later on in this video. The PDK for me, though, is a gearbox which enables you to do more things really. Um, it enables you to exploit the engine in a better way. And one of the things that people don't realise about the PDK is when you put it into PDK Sport then it, it acts as if you're a racing driver and it keeps you in the power band all the time and it won't upshift just won't upshift, it'll keep you in that power band all the time and as you come to bends, it will downshift again and again and again as you slow off and take speed off the, off the car. And that's something which I think a lot of people about the PDK, they don't realise, is that it will actually do that for you automatically. Now as we know, we've been to uh, Scotland recently and we had this car on those fine, incredible Scottish roads and it's interesting that Porsche are about to do or in the process of doing a 70th anniversary tour around the Highlands of Scotland. I don't think there's many better roads around, although we've got some good European stuff coming up uh, next month. That's in PDK Sport now, so I might push on. It goes through the gears as if I would be holding them myself up here. for me definitely is the best gearbox automatic gearbox on the market and you can see why other manufacturers like your Lamborghinis your Bentleys all part of this uh, Volkswagen Audi group this Behemoth group that's obviously got Porsche in there right at the heart of it 
they're taking that technology and they need to and they are putting it into their other cars they're producing the new Bentley Continental GT has got a much improved DCT gearbox double clutch gearbox which is all Porsche technology for those Bentley drivers to enjoy because it's just so so good and takes you through the rev band so so nicely so you can really really enjoy it so I don't know if there's a better car out there, a better manufacturer doing DCT stroke PDK gearboxes and cars. If there is, then put it down in the comments below. But I went PDK because I wanted the all-round proposition, and I think probably percentage-wise, I would say, well, certainly Porsche Center Kendall I think delivered only two manual cars out of their allocation. So that shows to me that the majority of people are going PDK. If I was going manual though, I would have gone for the Touring. Um, a car which I think is going to be very, very, very limited numbers right-hand drive in the UK. I think it's a car which, if you get your hands on one, yeah, uh, I think it's one for the future. There's no doubt about that. Some people are saying it's maybe spoiled the 911 R's party. I don't know if I believe that. I think 911 R 991 examples, you know, there's thousands of the Tourings out there, so I'm not so sure. But in right-hand drive, I think you could find the UK market has a very similar number of right-hand drive Touring GT3s, as well as right-hand drive 911Rs. But I could be wrong again. Also had a little bit of stick about the Scottish Highlands being the best roads in the world. One guy who's a bit abusive faint language put it on then to delete him off but uh, yeah the uh, best roads in the world well just enjoy this enjoy. I think the Scottish Highlands are some of the best roads in the world it's interesting Jeremy Clarkson had a piece I think it was a Sunday Times where he talked about he's driven all over the world and he says the Scottish Highlands are the best roads in the world. So if Jeremy Clarkson thinks so, I think he knows what he's talking about, don't you? Now I don't know if I've mentioned in previous videos, but we've got another track day coming up very, very soon. And I'm excited to get down to Anglesey Racetrack again and put this car through its paces on track. But there's some really nice metal showing up towards the end of May. And I'm looking forward to hopefully, hopefully getting access to some really nice cars on track so I can share that content with you guys. I don't want to say which cars yet because I've said I'm going to do certain cars in the past and things haven't worked out but stay tuned for that one because that's coming up very very soon indeed. And I like Anglesey because it's a very tight track and it really tests your cornering ability which is what it's all about when you're on a track, how well you do your corners and how well you uh, shrug off speed and then power out of the corners at Anglesey, I think, when it comes to lap times. But uh, I don't push it so, so hard because I'm not really a racing track driver. I know a lot of people really like the track driving. I prefer the open road, the challenges of overtaking, when it's safe to do so, of course. I think that came through in my Scottish video. Another thing which has come across in the comments has been my claim in my video, GT3, greatest car ever video I talked about Porsche creating history with this being the 991.2 and the last aspirated GT3 well I think it's going to be I got a lot of stick in the comments about some Porsche executives saying well oh well it still fits in a sports car and aspirated engine but I think he's talking there about their track car lineup and their non road car non road going car lineup so I'm not sure if I'm honest, that you're going to see an aspirated engine in the GT3 product car. And I think we're going down the road of a GT2 RS with more horsepower, more torque. But anyway, comments away if you think you've got some evidence to suggest Porsche are going to come out with more aspirated GT3s in the future. And I've not got the last one, but I think this is the last one. And I'm so glad I've got it. that in the 
this car and you just can't do that in many cars and again that's the PDK for you it's just you need it and it's there and it's just a quick engine and that crescendo in the back just that wave and wave and wave of noise it can almost make your, your, your ears wobble it's just got so much it's just got so much it really really has got so so much it really has so what else is coming up on drive adventure well we've talked about before my trip to France. Now we've made a few adjustments to the trip because the mileage was looking like it was going to get a little bit out of hand. So we're now going to do Le Mans. As you know, we've talked about Le Mans before. Four weeks Monday, we're on our way. Really can't wait to go over there and experience uh, experience that uh, that adventure of the Le Mans 24 hour race. With Porsche having that three in a row. I know it's uh, not challenging in LMP1 category this year, but anyway. It's going to be great to be over there with my pals experiencing that uh, that event and then after that we're moving further south and moving into the southwest of France towards the Dodoine area and we're going to be staying with someone that contacted me on the YouTube or through my YouTube videos and he's taking delivery of his GT3 touring very very soon now I've had plans to go feature the collection of that car there's been a few delays one thing and another but I'm hopeful that next week that's going to happen and we'll be down to Porsche Santa Hatfield to bring that content to you delivery of a GT3 touring as someone said a bit like hen's teeth but looking forward to bringing that content to you and he will be joining us again as we hit the Pyrenees later in June GT3 touring manual PDK GT3 back to back It'd be nice to explore that when we get down there. So that's all coming up on Driving Venture. I really, really appreciate the support. Thanks very much for watching the video. I thought I'd tell you today why I expect PDK. I know there's those purists that want the manual. And it's a great gearbox. Those six, uh, six gears, you know, slightly longer ratios enable that torque, which is much lower down in the Gen 1 car and the GT3 to come through you hold those gears a little bit longer so that's something which is uh, a reason why the manual is proving to be a very exciting drive for the people who spec that. And I really really appreciate the support. I only need another 400, just under 400 subscribers and I'll start getting a few pence of ad revenue but that's not what it's about when we get to the ad revenue we'll talk more about that but I don't really want ads on the channel but YouTube's such a great platform to put your stuff out there so you know it's a bit of a got to use it I suppose to get it out there like everyone else does but uh, I really really appreciate the support thanks very much for watching the videos and as always I will see you next time